Hello everybody, welcome to today's show. We're here at Dream Guitars and of course it's about guitars here so we're going to start with telling you a little bit about the guitar I'm playing today. This is a brand new Ken Hooper D18 style guitar. It's a red spruce top, sunburst of course, and sinker mahogany back and sides so get a good look at that. And Ken just finished this one up in the past week. We got it strung up and uh, this guitar will make its rounds later on the blue chip guitar pick table. So if you see them at shows or at the NAMM show or any festivals or anything like that and you want to try out a blue chip pick, this is probably the guitar you're going to get to play when they hand it to you to try it on. So be looking for it this coming year so it makes its rounds. Now this is a tune. It's called Horseshoe Bend. It was written by Tim Stafford. Of course, most of you are familiar with him. He plays with a group called Blue Highway. Anybody that knows me knows that's my favorite bluegrass group. I chose this song to teach you, and I'm going to teach it to you a little bit by ear. I don't like to use tab a lot. Uh, and I, I can't tell you how many times I'll put something on YouTube, and in the comments it'll say, hey, can you send me the tab to that? And, and I don't do tab. I don't read it. I don't write it. I learn and play everything by ear. Um, and this was a song, like I said, I just really enjoyed the CD, and uh, I would find myself practicing along with the CD, playing rhythm to the different songs, and, and this one just kind of rolled out. So the disclaimer is I'm not going to play it note for note like Tim. He's got his own style, of course. Uh, it's very close. Uh, so I'll break it down. And this is how I learn a song. And as much as it's training your left hand and your right hand, you're also training your ears. conscious of your downstrokes and upstrokes, but here's how it starts out. So if I wanted to break that down into a segment to learn it until I had that piece down, here's how I would start it. I would take it three, four, five notes at a time, uh, whatever you can tolerate, and everybody's a little different, so it's going to sound like this if you, if you break just the first, say, uh, six notes, so it would be... And I would just play that over and over until I had it. And I could play it at a reasonable speed. So it would sound, when you're first trying it, it's going to be. Until you get the notes under your fingers. Once you get the notes in your head and you know where they actually are, that's when you start practicing them so that you actually can accelerate through them. So it's going to sound more like. Till you get that piece. Get that piece before you go to the next piece. And then kind of set that one back on the shelf. You're going to come back to it. But the next piece of the puzzle is going to be six, seven notes at a time. So. Once you get that down, and you can do it over and over, and, and keep playing this with a metronome more in time, so it's going to sound like... Three, two, three. Once you get that one down where you get through it, you're going to back up now and take that first piece you learned and tag it into this one, and so it's going to sound like this. So it'll work together that way. And you just practice that one together now at the, until you can build a little speed up. And, and keep in mind, you're gonna keep this with a metronome and you wanna play it uniform, consistent, same speed. Um, that's one of the things I admire most about Tim's playing. It's all so fluid. Um, and I'm gonna stop for right there and, and tell you real quick, one of the reasons I chose this song, um, Tim's got a very unique style and he puts a lot of rests and things in his music uh, that when you're trying to learn how to play bluegrass guitar or these fiddle tunes, it's just a string of eighth notes. And a lot of times you get tired of 
of trying to learn da 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 da, da over and over, and, and they all kind of sound like the same thing after a while. So this song for me, it's, it's a great melody, but it allows your, your right hand the chance uh, to learn how to swap around some of those rests and keep the momentum going, and that's, that's important. And at the same time, if you notice my left hand when I'm playing this, I'm playing in a chord shape. I'm not getting out of that shape a whole lot. About the, the closest thing I do to getting out of the shape is this one chord we go to in a minute. You'll get there, I'll show you. But you're playing out of a, a of course we're capoed up on the fourth fret and playing a C chord. We're actually in the key of E, but if you hear me talking, I'm gonna say C chord because of the, the shape that we're playing in. So you're playing in C and then the F, and then the only really other thing is you're kind of still holding the same form, but you're playing a G seventh form in there somewhere. So getting back to the tune now. So you're this far along now. And at that point, you just kind of move your fingers down as you're playing to an A minor position. And that's it. That sets you up to go back to the next section, which is the same as the first section you've already learned, which is. Now the second time you play it, instead of resolving in the G, you do a quick G seventh and resolve back to the C, the root. So it's gonna sound like this the second time. That's the only difference. So now you're through the A section of this song. So I'm gonna do it real slow now, and you can break it down like I said on the YouTube video. You can pause it, slow it down, whatever you need to do. But this is what it's gonna be. That's the A section. So now you're in the B section of the song. In the B section, it goes straight to the F chord, so it's going to be. So, so what I'm doing here is I'm just I'm just hitting the F chord. That's pretty much the basis of that part of it. Over and over. It does that, and then the second time it does that, it goes to the G. That's it. Then it goes back to the F. And then it does this little funny chord, which is an A seventh, and you just raise this finger up on the third string to the fourth fret. One, two, three, four. So you play this. Resolve into the G seventh. And, and again, you'll hear that little brush at the end, it kind of makes space. And then it goes right back to the F. So the second time of the bridge it does the F, it does one little thing different. You're gonna catch a real quick E minor. So it's gonna be like this the second time. The same as the first with the exception of that. So it's gonna sound like that little tag lick that he does right there to resolve back to the C, all it is is... That's the notes involved. He's doing slides. You'll hear it, so it's more like this. 
section of the song will sound like this when it comes together. There's going to be a little discrepancies between what I just played and, and Tim's version if you go look them up. Using this song as a tool mainly is because your right hand needs more tension usually than your left. Once you learn your basic chords and your basic scales, everybody starts trying to work then on speed, which you have to use your left and right hand in conjunction. I like to teach songs a lot of times that takes a lot less thought for your left hand so you can concentrate more on the right hand. And for me, that's where this song fits in. It's, it's a great tool for that. It's also a great song that you can play by yourself and it sound full and good rather than just playing single note strings like we always do in fiddle tunes and stuff. So because of that, it's just something different that I like to teach. And I've, I've taught this song actually to a few of my guitar students and, and they pick it up fairly well. So I, I have faith that you will too if you want to. Thanks for watching today. I hope you enjoyed it.